Listeners be advised, the Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not in the Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson, and for you freaking motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. And as y'all motherfuckers already know, it is motherfucking November. We're back with the ninth episode of the month, and we're talking about sex toys and masturbation. In this episode, we will be diving deep into our whole bags and our toy ch- uh, toy closets and who i have with me y'all y'all know him very well it's motherfucker hakeem my twin how you doing today doing all right doing all right uh i'm here to talk about the things and the stuff and you know everything that's in our whole bags today look speaking of whole bags i've been uh, thinking about this idea of actually launching something called a whole bag uh of course it's just going to be like a uh like probably a tote uh with the holiloquy podcast logo on it and people can you know literally put their toys in there if they want to and I, I'm, mm. I'm also thinking about doing like a whole box too uh, which would just be like a little thing where somebody can just, you know, order it. It'll have like a toy uh, in there, some condoms, most definitely um, for a brand that might be sponsoring the show or not sponsoring the show. Just the ones mm-hmm. that I actually prefer people to use. But uh, like send that out, um, some lubes that people can try uh, or use for themselves. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to include like uh a flavored lube because look there's not enough people who try those and i love flavored lubes because i get to flavor whatever part part of my body i want them to look on and i i enjoy that so much <laughs> mm. so like you know just something like that um uh, just to connect with people um and give them access to some additional toys or stuff to try at home who knows with their partner but that's just something i'm thinking about uh i don't know for sure if i'm going to do it who knows Mm -hmm. but um before we even start going into our whole bags because yes we will be talking about our fucking toys just let y'all know it uh, it is November. November is a month of celebration. In this episode, I'm, I'm going to be sipping on some wine. Sipping on this is herb. Right. Yeah, I'm going to be enjoying it. And um, I have I have my own little mix that I use now. And it's it's been giving me life. Like ever since the uh, <laughs> the, the podcast <laughs> reached like a thousand downloads. I was like, let me go ahead and celebrate. And nice. I love, um, like, I, I drink Taylor Port, and Taylor Port kind of just levels ain't me that out. Just, ain't that just like a, a grape juice? <laughs> nigga no <laughs> <laughs> it's some strong ass grape juice <laughs> and it's not even stronger than most liquors but it 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 levels me out it makes me feel relaxed and it gives me a great little buzz and i and that's the thing i like about it it's just it mm-hmm. also has a it's very bitter and it's a little bit sweet uh, so what I decided to do, um, I I mix it now with some other wines. So I have like a good portion of Taylor uh, Taylor Port. Then I add in some of uh, that good bitch Stella because she mm. always pull the fuck up and sis is sweet. So she gives me that little nice sweetness um, to balance out the bitterness. And then I uh, add some 
uh, Island Punch Bacardi in there just because I'm like, might as well. And then mm-hmm. just because I'm sexy, I always put some fruit juice in there. All right, mixologist. Damn. Uh, and it is so delicious. <laughs> I'm gonna call this the uh the 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 drink of the satyrs. I don't like <laughs> Look, it's the Hovember special bitch. That's what it is. There you go. <laughs> That's what we're gonna call it. Um <laughs> Look, and I'm probably not going to mention what the fuck I'm drinking, like the mixture in other episodes, but y'all motherfuckers, when you get to this point, that's what I've been sipping on. <laughs> <This is great>. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm-hmm. oh God, hold up. Let me get another sip in. All right. So, how can what the fuck is in your hope? Oh, shit. You know what? I left my other bag in my room, but it's Damn, perfectly you got fine. Two? Yes, I got two. I have the I have the essential bougie. bag and I have the toy bag. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say what a bougie nigga. <laughs> I accept that. I will fucking accept that. <laughs> So, like, in my essentials bag, that's the bag where I have, like, my um, condoms, uh, enemas, wipes, uh, my lubes. Uh, I also, well, I do keep a flavor lube in that motherfucker. Uh, I uh, also have, like, um, toothpaste, uh, toothbrush, all the... um, Essential. All the essentials, essentially, um, deodorant, extra fragrances that I like. So that's that's what's in my essential bag. But my uh, my toy bag, I don't take that everywhere. That is, if I know what I'm going over there for, that might come with me, or I might take some mm-hmm. toys out and put it in my essential bag and let let um let let everything happen the way they need to happen. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what what do you? have in your bag what do you have in your toy do you have a toy chest or you just keep a bag no i just keep a bag for right now um i haven't upgraded to a chest because uh, i don't have a place of my own like that so when i get a place of my own best believe i'm getting a chest um but in my uh bag it's kind of like your essentials bag mm-hmm. but um i got flavored lube um this pineapple is- and mango yeah, it's pineapple, uh, banana. It's tropical flavor, tropical explosion. Never had it before. Um, actually, what you mean you never? Ha- you have to taste your loops. Well, flavor loops. Well, I mean, I bought it and I was expecting to use it, but like I said, people, people just be like, "Yeah, I want to fuck," and then like when it comes time for it, it's like, "Oh, like I can't. I gotta do other shit." I'm like, all right, I understand. Like, I get it. Mm-hmm. Um. I also have these uh, 50 Shades of Grey handcuffs. A um, little bit of branding. I don't agree <laughs> with the actual like show and shit or the movie, but mm-hmm. you know these were on sale, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to get these fucking cuffs. Um, it's got a key with it. God, Are man. they fur? No, 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 no. Not at all. They're the actual like metal fucking cuffs. Ooh, sir, you need to get you some fur cuffs. They're a little bit more comfy. I mean, I hear you, but... I don't plan on uh like using those. Yeah, like using them, using them. Uh like, you know, for them to struggle against and shit like that. You know what I mean? Um I have yet to use these in a sexual setting, but yeah, I mean, you know, if I wanna walk around and shit, like make sure uh make sure the bitch don't get lost in the public setting. Like comfort <laughs> like, like come on, let's go. <laughs> I feel you there. Like um, um just like clink clink <laughs> we gonna walk yeah, I'm together like, <laughs> yeah, i'm like yeah you on punishment yeah, you go. <laughs> um it's domination yeah and also i have root speaking of which because we uh we uh I-, I almost asked the question earlier where the hell did you get your um rope for and do you mind explaining shibari sure uh so shibari is a japanese art uh of rope tying um there's rope tying and then there's shibari like shibari is a whole different type of tying in general mm. um it can get very intricate it's supposed to be very sensual um because you're building a connection with your partner um or you know the person that you're tying up and stuff mm-hmm. um in addition to that where i got my rope i got it from amazon believe it or not mm. um and i also got these uh cool uh emt safety scissors um 
they like EMTs use use them to cut off people's clothes and shit like that. Um, you have to have like, or it is recommended that you have a way to quickly um, undo some rope or anything like that, like some sort of scissors or safety instrument that you can use a sharp. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way, you know, the person starts, you know, to have a panic attack or freaking out or like the rope is too tight and you need to get it, get it out in a quick and a jiff. You can just snip and then you're good. Um, speaking of that, there is a guy on YouTube who, te- who teaches like Shibari a little bit. Um, what's his name? Uh, I think his name is, yeah, Rory, Rory Brainsworks. Uh, that's his YouTube thing. Um, he's like the go to guy that I look at when I'm trying to like understand, like, okay, how do I do this? Like, what does this look like? You know, that kind of thing. Ooh, something that we can put in the show notes. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, so wait, is that all the toys that you have? Um, I have a couple of others, like some masturbatory toys for myself, but I rarely use those things because, like, ain't not ain't nothing like your your own hand or a body. I agree with you one hundred percent. Um, like I I do have a few masturbatory toys that I'm going to go into uh, soon, but I like it's nothing like. <laughs> my own hands are somebody else like it's it's i think it's the connection for me um mm-hmm. like uh what 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 masturbatory toys do you have so a long long time ago <laughs> there was a uh shit what uh, i forget what they were called like they used to have an ad like every fucking where basically they had like uh sex toys in a can mm-hmm. like, like I, are, you, are you talking about like the fleshlight thing yeah fleshlight. Okay. yeah so fleshlight had like this whole line of like toys that were designed to be used by men and they were like in a can like a beer can mm-hmm. and i was like that's interesting like, like i want one of them so i bought like two of them the first one I lost. The second one, <laughs> yeah, I it, I moved. <laughs> I used this a sex toy. Just imagine if you just left it in um, the apartment. And somebody just pulls up and like, "What is that, Johnny? What is this?" Um, is this um Rebecca, beer? don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. That's just beer. Uh, I'm, I handle this. I wonder if this man used this last time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> do I wash it or <laughs> dispose of it immediately? Like, I'm I'm one of those people. that's like, yo, like if I can't. I don't trust like I don't trust using toys on uh like that I'm gonna come in contact with like mm-hmm. I don't want to s- swap that unless I'm like thoroughly cleaning that bitch like one or two mm-hmm. to three times exactly um but no nah, like they came out with this line of like sex toys that came in a can and I got one that was a anal toy and one one that was a uh, vaginal toy and I was like this shit is all right but. I mean, my hand could do like a lot better. <laughs> exactly. Like, um, let me let me go into my whole bag and pull out some stuff. Like the the <laughs> flashlights that I have, I use them with other like people, but mm-hmm. for myself, I don't really like them too much mm-hmm. uh, because it does absolutely nothing for me. Because uh, right. I do get a lot more pleasure from me providing my own pleasure with my own. And it's just a connection with my baby that's all like mm-hmm. I, I enjoy that but i will say this one that i have in my hand is like um it's i love the jelly feel of it in the hmm. suction sound it's like yeah but like <laughs> i i like the the feeling of the gel like if i could have this gel as like a glove oh, oh my god i would go to town on my dick like, <laughs> like <laughs> oh my god like it, but yeah it's mainly the gel that i like um with this toy so this one i will definitely use a little bit more and i'm sorry mm-hmm. y'all because this is like an audio podcast y'all will not be able to see these actual toys uh, I will say I got this off of uh, Amazon. I forgot exactly <laughs> where. Uh, if I get a link, I'll put that in the show notes for y'all. Um, this will, I will at least, I, I, 
I'm not going to remember to put show on uh, like toy one, toy two, or anything like that. Yeah, I will at least share some of the information that I have. But like this one, I will say will be uh, of the masturbatory, uh, like mm-hmm. the big ones, will be the more superior one. And then I have an uh, automated one. I'm like, well, before I go to the automated one, this one vibrates. It also um, has its own <laughs> suction. Now the suction in itself is hard to control because it's like one of the buttons releases the pressure that's already in there. And because it's sucking your dick in, you just have to figure out which one is which. (laughs) (laughs) It does it on its own. And then there's another button that makes it like suck in a little bit more. And then they're just like, I think one of the uh, rules is don't cover the hole. It's easy to clean though. I will say that. Wait, why won't you cover the hole? Um, because it, it uh, impacts the pressure, but uh, oh. I, I cover it to make it a little bit more suction feel. So, suction. <laughs> like, you're not releasing that air anytime soon. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it is very easy to clean. Now, the other one mm-hmm. is um, I hate it because there's like this huge gap between. <laughs> like the 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 automated massager because it's it goes down and up and it's like that space between where it's at it's like i get it you know for well well endowed people right um but at the same time it doesn't even connect with like the average dick so it's like <laughs> even if you have a little bit of girthiness to it, the the walls of the machine doesn't really do anything for you. It just feels like a little bit of like I guess jelly claws that- <laughs> outlining your dick, and it's like what the fuck is that supposed to do for anybody? Um, but I have some um, former sex partners who was like, okay, I kind of enjoy it, but I'm like, I don't see how the. Um, the rotations are horrible uh, wow. there's not a constant circular motion that it can go into it's like let's go in the circle then let's go back and then it just keeps doing that over and over <laughs> or do three circles then go back one then go another three i'm like those rotations are not it <laughs> so <laughs> see that's the thing like i don't know what so okay women talk about how uh dudes when they you know feel like you know when they about when women are about to come they switch up the motion and it changes like their whole mood and like they just say nah it's over with like you, you fucked it up mm-hmm. like it's the same thing with dudes and masturbating like there's a rhythm and when a sex toy fucks that rhythm up you just like all right i'm gonna just i'm gonna just switch back to my hand like why did i spend money on this exactly like i could have just pleasured myself and it would have been lit it would have been all that i needed like right. <laughs> that's it now um i i have some kink toys <laughs> and <laughs> other um uh, things okay this is a charger let me put that in <laughs> i don't need that right now actually i do because in- anyways so <laughs> look i'm actually supposed to be meeting up with somebody tonight possibly i don't know for sure they haven't responded and okay. toys were going to be involved okay. one toy in particular uh, which is also one of my favorites to use for myself but we'll get into that a little bit later so if you hear these little sounds these are nipple clamps so nice. the reason i actually own these is for a, a former partner of mine mm-hmm. and it's because they like to have their uh, nipples um, bitten and I also got to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm biting your nipples way too hard that <laughs> and oh, no. I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to bite off your nipples. So I want a safety measure. And uh, so I was like, let's get some clamps and try it that way. Unfortunately, the clamps did not work because it was too much pressure for them. So we ended up not having to do that and had to go back to teeth. So mm. it didn't work out the way that we wanted to, but um say that to say i got nipple clamps um now they do have a setting so that you can um reduce the pressure that you feel like i do enjoy some good nipple play but i prefer soft nipple play because my nipples are sensitive as hell if you bite (laughs) the shits too hard i'm ready to punch you in the face 
literally yeah. like my regular a motherfucker bit a little bit too hard. I was like, Nick. Then I was like, I literally had to calm down. I was like, a little bit softer, a little bit softer. Uh, I don't like, let's communicate, Vernon. Violence is not, not the, answer the answer in this moment. Violence is not the answer. Communicate. Use your words. Use your fucking words. <laughs> so, you know, just like, hey, too too hard. You gotta be softer with these. They're sensitive. Yep. Don't be brutalizing my fucking titties. We don't do that. Um, now I have this um, clitoral stimulator. Uh, mm-hmm. It is one of the ones that have a tongue, and oh, okay. I I use this for nipple play because uh, I am a man who does not have a vulva. I do not have a clitoris, so it really does nothing for me to have a clitoral stimulator. Right. You- have to make that obviously known because somebody asked me well why do you need a rose and i don't own a rose yet but i am getting one but the reason why i need a rose is for nipple play people yeah I like a rose my how do people <laughs> that's that's something that never that always is you know trips me out like people don't think about think you know doing stuff outside the box right so like this little this little tongue that this thing has mm-hmm. it's, it's a little rough but i also like it it the the speed mm. that it like l- l- kind of licks as you can see I, <laughs> yep. going, I like that it's it's very comfortable so, <laughs> and it goes faster too so it's like i use this for nipple play and nipple play only um now Another benefit of having this, if I actually meet up with a partner who uh, has a clitoris or a full on vulva or whatever, yeah. I can use this on them. So it's like get your get your toy game up so you have partners that you can you know use them with. Right now, um, cleaning because you did mention that earlier. Because mm-hmm. uh, I'm skeptical about you know other people's toys because i don't know their cleaning process and i know for myself i clean my fucking toys and i mm-hmm. use toy cleaner uh yep. hot water cold water yep. <laughs> then um more toy a cleaner <laughs> a blessing yeah but like i i clean my toys twice so when mm. people just like oh yeah we just bring out the toys and whatnot and i'm like no i'm not going to bring out my toys for a, a meetup at midnight because when i get home or mm. if you come over here and then you uh, leave i'm going to be up cleaning my toys because right. i do not go to sleep with messy toys that's not happening over here i'm oh, not no. i'm not going to allow that build up of bacteria on my toys from one and another thing if i forget to clean my toy then that's uh, that's another issue so i'm not going to risk that so mm -mm. so like um if i don't know your cleaning process (laughs) don't think you're going to use your toys with me um like it's not happening like people clean your toys clean your toys i cannot stress this enough clean your toys and clean your toys twice if that means putting alcohol on your toys to make sure you disinfect the motherfuckers put alcohol on your toys um and then let them dry out uh keep them away from the other toys all that other Mm -hmm. stuff so what other shit do i have in my hoe bag Ooh, um just for um you got lube Oh, of course I got lube. I keep lube. Um, now that's in my essentials. I have yeah. this nipple titillation uh, aerosol gel for nipple play. Uh, uh-huh. I think it's flavor too. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, hmm. Okay, I haven't used this in a while. Ho- whole tongue go no. <laughs> it is yeah that um not oh, spearmint, yeah. but that winter. Winter green, green, yeah, it's that winter kind of mint, yeah, I winter think. mint. So like that's the flavoring of it, but yeah, I use this on my nipples and it is pretty nice. Somebody, um, somebody told me that you can use um CB CBD oil or something like that, or I wouldn't be shocked. Something like, yeah, like you can use CBD um oil or something like that to kind of 
to it's like a numbing agent but also makes mm -hmm. you horny so i was like how does that work like yeah. cbd is uh well cbd oil is great for like massages so i i will say that i don't know necessarily in terms of horniness so i am curious about exploring that but mm -hmm. yeah uh i have a a mask for kink stuff but this is mostly for my zadam side uh yeah sebastian zadams y'all you better you better recognize the motherfucker um then i have i have a dildo but this is not for me um mm -hmm. it's, it's like huge um, <laughs> like yeah that's whoa right. what is that that's a burrito bro <laughs> not a fucking burrito like i i cannot like i originally purchased it for myself and i was like no i can't do this i don't know how people do this for themselves more power to you but uh yeah. after a while i was like you know i can i know some people i can use this on so let's do that instead so mm -hmm. yeah uh i have this huge motherfucker uh, i actually got this one from adam for adam their shop uh, okay. i I don't I personally don't like the vibrations but some people do so it's like choose whatever you want yeah you can have whatever you like kind of thing mm-hmm so I I um, also have a collar and leash um, just for the pet play kind of thing um, not necessarily for anybody that I'm genuinely trying to collar now I did use this with a former partner and it did make the sex a lot more better most definitely whenever you a lot more better come on no it, it, it intensified the sex because it got to a point where it's like rather than me having to vocalize rougher or uh, faster all I had mm -hmm. to do is just pull the collar or loosen up the collar a little bit and it was it just was very natural hmm. and it was it was fun it was it was a motherfucking movie I will say that uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I actually do have some rope but it's mm -hmm. very small rope so I don't really count it worth of shit but got that okay. now um just to transition well i'm still in kink kink stuff so i, I thought i was going to go back to the vibrators um but i have a few more so this here is my feather because i do like some good sensory play so for anybody okay. who like sens sensual play and whatnot and they want to see what feather play is like hit mm -hmm. your boy up i don't mind showing you how great <laughs> that shit can be and how a feather can lead you towards an orgasm depending on what you like um right now i also have a flock <laughs> so Good. Okay. i do like a little bit of impact play spanking and shit spank that ass yep um then i have a couple of uh what's the things called uh ain't no not g-spot but um uh, uh, prostate stimulators oh okay so i have a smaller one well they they're both pretty small but um hmm. the the smallest one has a remote control that i can use um during the uh, sex this is actually my favorite one uh oh, okay because of the remote control <laughs> and then there's the other one that has a cock ring attached to it uh okay. i use this with uh, my regular ones and yeah it was fun so kind of about what i was talking about earlier about the, you know meeting up with somebody yeah might as well tell y'all what the uh the goal is because by the time this airs the incident already happened so it is <laughs> so, <laughs> all right so as, if y'all want to do this with your partners feel free to do so so look free sex advice gotta love it uh -huh. uh, it's hope bimber you, you should be having sex anyways to celebrate if you're not mm, you might as well do it after this fucking episode <laughs> oh yeah go ahead and get that dick in or pussy what ain't it so the the thing is uh with this person it's a, it's a guy and mm -hmm. um he's also a bottom and the the goal is to 
elongate the orgasm as long as I can. Oh, edging? Yeah. Um, okay. Because I, I, I love... I'm a fan of pleasure overload as well as delayed gratification. So I mean, you went to college, like that's pre- that's pretty much like what we do. Facts. <laughs> so like I um I'm going to use my favorite uh, uh, prostate stimulator. Um, use that to control his um you know control the vibrations with the remote. Uh, there's also an app I, I think I deleted the app But you know Have that going on And that's That's the thing That's going to warm him up And while that's um, You know Warming him up Getting him aroused And going on Utilize the Feather To find his Sensitive areas And Rub that down his body um, throughout all the crevices, find all the erogenous zones. And when I uh, locate exactly on his body that is the most sensitive, utilize the flaw to, you know, uh, heighten that area a little bit more, spank it some, um, let it get normal to that impact feeling, and then go back over it with the, um, with the feather. Just, you know, go in and out with the uh, sensations there uh, do a little bit of body rubbing and I hope until this motherfucker orgasms without nobody touching him nice damn so. <laughs> yeah, man. You, you, you ain't teaching a master class like look if motherfuckers trying to learn look I don't mind I do not mind oh shit my feather matches my hair okay <laughs> <laughs> that's why i was like oh shit this man teaching a whole master class over here mm. so if y'all into some sensory play there you go another thing i like in sensory play is uh like breath what breath play um oh yeah 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 like doing slow breezes on a person or even hot breath and whatnot on the back of your neck oh my god and just those kind of things I, I love sensory play, y'all. Sensory play is where it's at. <laughs> I know other people not into the sensory play, but uh, the motherfucker over here is into the sensory play. Um, and having control of a, over other people's uh, orgasms, I don't yeah. know. That's the greatest kink. <laughs> it, is. it really is. Because, you know, it's a, it's a certain level of, like, control that goes with it, too, right? Like, you can tell somebody, like, hey, you know, I don't... I don't want you to to come just yet. I want you to uh, you know, stay stay where you are right now on that on that edge. Mm-hmm. Let me rub you down, or like you know, don't come yet until I come. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, if, <laughs> and like if you if you if you're not like the easy a, a person that easily comes, like that can be torture all in itself. And honestly. Because I, I talk the talk, but I cannot walk the walk because I'm one of those people that can come very easily. Mm-hmm. And, like, most definitely, like, if I'm really into the sex and I'm enjoying myself, mm-hmm. a quick breeze, <laughs> like, literally a breeze, <laughs> it's the tip breeze. of my fucking uh, uh, dick will have me like, oh, my God, I'm coming. But the, the, re- the recharge game is on point like all okay. i need is uh one minute sometimes or even two mm-hmm. and i can get back in it now if i experience a full body orgasm <laughs> oh if that happens yeah i'm that's... out for a good 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> don't touch me, don't touch me. I, i'm disgusted with everything that i've just done i'm disturbed <laughs> that was the things that we just did is not okay. It's unnatural. I'm a holy child in this moment. How dare you <laughs> want to go that, forward? With I, I have orgasm re- regrets. <laughs> exactly. Like, don't touch me. I'm a filthy whore at this moment. And yes, you can call me that shit right now. And I'm like, okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's. <laughs> I mean, it's just like um the idea of you know somebody switch it switch being flipped right Mm -hmm. like you sitting there and you over here making them think ungodly things about themselves right 
and there's a point or there's a point in time when that person gets into like the subspace you, mm-hmm. you know i think we talked about it before uh where subspace is where that person is just not thinking on the a higher level like you know like basic level of functioning they're like really fall going off instinct at some mm-hmm. point and subspace is different for different people the, i've never experienced it because i'm not like a sub i'm more of a top um i'm not going with like dominant or anything like that now because i don't know i'm not very like overtly <laughs> dominant <laughs> like i make you feel i make you feel nice mm-hmm. i talk to you nice but if you don't do what i ask you to do then i'm just like oh well let's see how we can <laughs> correct that real quick <laughs> you're not the assertive dom right i'm not the assertive dom i'm like a loving dom like gotcha. oh did you drink water today you know you got to be drinking water today like that kind of shit <laughs> real daddy shit oh oh he said he a daddy oh, mm, I, I, daddy. at this point i gotta at this point <laughs> in my, at my age i gotta I gotta go ahead and own up to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you at your big daddy age, anyways. Big daddy yeah. king. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> y'all! That's going to be his stage name, Big, big daddy, daddy king. king. I'm here for it. Oof. Um, but yeah. So, uh, what's the other thing we were supposed to be talking about? Oh, um, well, what is your? Do you have a favorite toy? Um, I prefer, so I do have a Lush, uh, for, you know, for her pleasure, but I can't find it for some reason. Hold on. What? <laughs> oh, appreciate you. Hey, this apple juice is pretty good from what I hear. Um, what apple juice? You know, that apple juice that being like the- Oh, the little cute it. bottle. That's such a cute bottle. Yeah, yeah. So, um, confession listeners, um, I have a, uh, apple juice- um addiction you have an um, addiction I'm oh, this better. Is, oh my god don't tell me that now i'm going to go get some um i need mm. another send me the brand all that shit but uh, um i should not like so i'm better these days with my a- apple juice shit so like <laughs> it's martinelli's Mm, Martin Ellis. Let me see if they have that in my local area. But um, so like there was this time, right? I, mm-hmm. I just needed apple juice. Apple juice was what I wanted. Um, it was my preferred drink. So I avoided it because I know how I react when I get near some fucking apple juice. <laughs> like back in the day in the cafeteria, I went to the calf. I'll get me some mm-hmm. apple juice. I will enjoy my apple juice until they start watering that shit down, which pissed me the fuck off. I'm sorry. I should not be in that moment right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's that uh, the whole drink. The drink of the hoes. It's got right. him uh, in his feelings. It got me in my feelings. Kiki, so, do you love me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking done. So, like, I uh, I will go there every morning, just get me some apple juice and make sure that I have that in my system. It's a good start to my day. Then I'll just, you know, start. The reason I drink a lot more lemonade these days is so I can avoid drinking apple juice. So, there's that. Now, um, there was a point where I was like, you know what? I'm doing a lot better. I could have me some apple juice. I don't go crazy with it or anything. And I know people are listening to this like, how the fuck can you be addicted to apple juice? Hey, it's man, delicious. it's a real thing. It's delicious as fuck. So, uh, and it, it, look, Mott's apple juice, juicy mm-hmm. juice, uh, apple juice. Those are the top tier apple juices. I might have, uh, you said Martinelli? Yeah, Martinelli's. Martinelli's. So, I'm going to have to try them to see if they're also top tier. You Everything addicted, else, bro. it's a little. I already different. know. So now, actually, there was this Kroger brand apple juice. So this is this is uh, when I had to recognize my problem and accept my problems, not really heal from my problems or do anything about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I went to Kroger and I was like, hmm, I never had their uh, apple juice before, and that that. Um, jug. It was a uh, half gallon jug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was two for five. And it's sad that I remember all this. No, it was, it was two for three. 
mm -hmm. it was two for three and it the the bottle glistened and it was sweating and i'm like you are looking delicious and i never tried you and i want to try you and i'm like you have mm -hmm. a good price so i'm going to get you get the two of you for the three dollars so i did that mm -hmm. i put one of them in the freezer because i was like i want actually i put both of them in the freezer and i wanted i waited 30 minutes so the other one you know one of them can get you know super cold yeah yeah so i was like yes give this some time cool off and then i'm going to mm -hmm. indulge and i drink that entire half gallon damn in less, in less than 30 minutes and then i was like you know what that's good i got my fix life is great I probably should take this other one down from the top of the freezer, but you know what? I wanted to get a little bit colder before I do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. An hour pass, and I'm like, I should take this from up top. I go in, into the uh, look into the freezer. I'm just like, okay, let me go ahead and bring you out. You're looking good. You're looking delicious. Oh, I see you a little bit frothy in there. I see a little bit of ice crystals forming. Ooh, you're at that peak. Peak. I know every single. Every single sip I have will have a little bit of iciness to it. Mm. It'd be like a slushy, but it's not a slushy because it's too fluid. Fluid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also sat down and drank that half gallon in less than 30 minutes. And I felt so great for 10 to 15 minutes. And then I remembered apple juice runs through your body. Apple juice somehow upsets the stomach a little bit and just say, motherfucker, you won't be on the toilet. And I was oh. happy to be on that toilet because one the apple juice was good it was hidden and that second one with the little fr frozen bits in it it got the job done it did it it did what needed to be fucking done in that moment and mm -hmm. i do not regret mm -hmm. it so yeah a two gallon uh, thing of apple juice does not last more than two days in my apartment damn could could never see i used to be that way with soda but then I said, you know what? You know, it's not fun uh, being dehydrated all the goddamn time. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that, and also, I used to be like that with apple juice. Um, but then I was like, you know what? It's not fun smelling like apples when I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> 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 like, shit. Man. Oof. I haven't had apple juice in three years. And I, mean, I think the main reason for that is because of COVID. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do not go to the grocery store for pleasure anymore. I go in there for the necessities, <laughs> necessities only. I don't go up in there and be like, oh, what snacks do we got today? Oh, is that a, a fucking nutty bar? I might get me a fucking nutty bar. Is that a fucking, uh, what is it? Uh, not turkey leg. <laughs> some jerky let me give you some jerky today nope I'll, mm -mm. only necessities and i'll get the fuck out oh <laughs> lord so um since we both masturbate mm -hmm. i'm going on the assumption that you're pro masturbation have you oh, yeah. encountered any persons who were against masturbation let me tell you about that bullshit <laughs> like <laughs> oh my god i <laughs> i don't so okay I'm all for masturbation because one, masturbation is uh, how you keep yourself, one, sexually healthy, and two, it can prevent prostate cancer. Mm. Like, I didn't know that. Either either is that or something else. Something sexual prevents prostate cancer, but I think it's masturbation. All right, anyway, whenever there's a relationship, right, with two people, two consenting parties, and one of them controls when you can masturbate, that relationship is controlling and toxic and you should leave immediately mm. like i've i've met two people so far who have said that they were in relationships where their partner told them that hey you can't watch porn you can't masturbate um you can only like have sex with me and i'm just like first off how, how are you gonna control this grown-ass man and tell him what he can and can't do second off why not like, tell me why is it? I just don't like the crazy thing about it is the person didn't really have a logical explanation as to why. Like, oh, this person has a problem, like an addiction to porn or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was just, I don't want them to do it. And I'm like, what if somebody told you, I don't want you to work no more. I want you to be in the kitchen only. How would you feel? 
that's exactly how it feels when you're told not to masturbate. Not exactly. It's just a, a exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a good metaphor though, because I get that. I, I, it resonates with me at least. Uh, somebody mm-hmm. else, they probably not. Uh, it, it is what it is. I will say, I was stuck on. <laughs> I, I had to shake myself to get back current, because I was stuck on the I cannot watch porn. Well, you cannot watch porn aspect because I'm like, what do you mean? If, oh, I don't watch porn that often, but it's the like. Telling me I cannot do that on my free time is like, you, are you asking me not to be sexual? Are you telling me I cannot look at it? So I can't watch P Valley, even though it's not porn, but bitch. <laughs> 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 so like, can I can I watch any show that has sex in it? I feel like I'm like. So you mean to tell me I can't have eyes? Like no. I can't just be out here looking at some fine it? Like let me tell you. Oh man, let me tell you. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but around the full moon, yams be out here. Like women just be out here shopping with yams and cheeks <laughs> everywhere. And I'm just like, where y'all come from? <laughs> uh, I'm so done. And some I will say, this this is interesting. I don't know if it's anything factual, but you know, being on the spiritual side of things, most definitely like spiritual side of like TikTok spaces. And people oh. talk about um spirit talk. <laughs> yeah, spirit talk. And they're talking about, you know, the um transitions in the moon and whatnot. And somebody brought it up and I was like, I could see the logical side of this, because you know, with the human body being like 70% water already and then the moon cycle is 28 days like the uh, menstrual cycle and whatnot Mm -hmm. and so people are like well you know when you track your cycles and whatnot and you connect it to like the what's going on on the um on like the celestial level um right. most people cycle link up with like the <laughs> the phases of the moon mm-hmm. if that's the case that might be the reason why the new moon brings out the new ass and i'm here for it y'all better moon these motherfuckers out here exactly. if you if you're here for it and you're proud of yourself and you are confident in what you're bringing and people are respecting you for that show it off and if you are not respecting them learn to respect them we all yeah. have the ability and capabilities of being sexual beings. Amen. Exactly. Educated sexual beings, I might add. Cool. Uh, Important. Yeah, because don't like dumb. I don't know what it is about. Like, see, here's the thing. I have a bimbo cake. I'm not afraid to say that I have a bimbo cake at this <laughs> point in my life because I have realized this about myself. I like dumb hoes. <laughs> Now, that doesn't mean that you actually have to be a dumb hoe. You just have to, like, pretend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I like... Smart girls are cool. Like, I like smart girls. Like, I like the fact that you can do calculus all on the fly. Like, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. I like that you're nerdy. However, if you put some heels on, like, a sundress, paint your lips pink or whatever, got the nails and shit, and look like a dumb hoe, I'm going to be like, you know what? You my dumb hoe. <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> <laughs> so um, instead of it being called a bimbo kink, it's a dumb hoe kink. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like bimbo, bimbo flication is a real thing. Like they, like I don't know. Like um, one of my friends, we were talking. She was like, "Yeah, I have a hoe, a, a bimbo flication kink," and I was like, "What? You do?" Uh, cause she likes turning dudes into like whole bimbos, and I'm like, see, that's oh. I can get with you. <laughs> I'm so done, but look, I I cannot even like say anything because I know like my <laughs> I had an old kink back in the day, and, and my ages are being toxic as hell. Turning uh, niggas out, <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I had this thing that I'm like, you know what? Which nigga I'm gonna make my bitch today? (laughs) (laughs) If the way I would know that it's I accomplished it is whenever I hit it. (laughs) (laughs) In my job, I'm a whole ass bottom in that if I can make it. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> At one point, I was ten for ten, y'all. 
Nice. <laughs> when I was keeping count after that, I was like, we shall see how this keep going. And then after a while, I was like, you know what? I need to stop. <laughs> just like engage and have sex with people the way I have sex with people. Because around that time, I was like no longer into oral too. So it was like, well, there's that. So <laughs> I think you I think I vaguely remember you saying that like when we were in an undergrad and I was like why not <laughs> well, it, it was fun like it, it is funny because you know people just like oh yeah you know no films and all this other stuff even though I'm not I don't identify as film or anything like that but I'm like mm-hmm. okay bet no films we'll see how quick that film can come out yep. you real macho macho man into the uh, <clears throat> you good? Yeah. You good? I'm like, <laughs> I look. I, I tell people every all the time. I'm like, hey man, you, you never know what you're gonna get until you do it. Like, it's just a thing. Because uh, uh, I was, I, I will say I've turned out a good, um, good bit of people. And and when I say turn out, I don't mean like turn somebody gay, turn somebody by. I mean like me. Flip that shit and reversed it, and they just was like, you know what? My life has changed in this moment. I have awakened. Uh, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> I now know what good ass is. <laughs> Look, change motherfuckers' lives out here for the better. I'm gonna I'm, get my grades right. <laughs> Look, I'm doing the Lord's work out here. Don't shame me. Accept it. <laughs> if you're not doing the Lord's work, what how you? dare you? How dare you speak on anything? Do the Lord's work. Bless these motherfuckers the way they need to be blessed. Bring them to a higher level of consciousness. Exactly. And then leave them broken. I'm joking. I'm t- <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all, that's the Taylor Port. Um, <laughs> that's the Taylor Port? That's what that is? Wow. That's what that is. That's what it is. Uh, but yeah, I didn't do that to too many people. Only those assholes who deserved it. Um, now, Hmm. So, overall, like, have you always been, like, supportive of masturbating? Uh, or at one point, did you feel as though it was bad to masturbate or anything like that? Uh, I mean, the only time that I really felt it was, like, bad, per se, is, like, you know, when you're younger and you're not allowed to do specific things, that kind of thing. Um, But other than that, no, nah, it's like... Sure, masturbation is cool, whatever. It doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't do anything. The only time it does become a problem is like if you just can't stop. You know, like you gotta, I gotta, mm. like, I gotta rip it out. Like, no, it should never be that way. True, true. Like, <clears throat> I would say I became a lot more comfortable. Well, you know, I will masturbate in secret, but I think I started to talk about masturbation more openly um, mm-hmm. midway through high school. Cause I used to tell a lot of my female friends, like once we graduate, I'm buying all y'all vibrators, which is a vibrator for those who mm. don't understand that lingo. And <laughs> I didn't do it because mm. you know, a motherfucker was poor. Yeah. Um, but cause I'm just like, you might as well know this stuff. You might as well go ahead and be out here on these streets and you know, enjoying yourself with a vibrator. And right. um, like, uh, cause at that point I started, I was really, diving more into the sex education side of things mm-hmm. and also um looking into like the porn that actually talked on a sex ed kind of level okay. um like when it came to oh let's explore the woman's body a little bit more and they were um like that's how i learned how to find the g-spot very easily oh. um and it's <laughs> like they were talking about how um because I won't say sex ed, but they were just talking about the uh, female body and pleasure. So Mm -hmm. um, they were like, literally, all you do is uh, like ask your partner if you uh, um, want to find your G spot. Listen to this. um, Listen to this people. So um, if you really want to find your G spot, uh, lay on your back, uh, get in a very comfortable position. um, Just. Uh, massage yourself a little bit that can be clitoral stimulation uh, outside the vulva area just you know <clears throat> getting yourself a little bit more aroused 
and then um, insert like one finger uh, or two fingers, whichever one's uh, more comfortable for you, and then start searching the inner lining of your uh, of the uh, vulva in about uh, one to two inches within the canal, the uh, vaginal canal. You'll find it. It's um, it's typically a, a rougher patch of skin uh, or muscle tissue, mm-hmm. and that's it. It's funny because like I found I found like so many people's G spot that I'm just like I don't know what that is, but it feels different. Let me just go ahead and see what happens. And like, oh, that's a reaction I want. Let me keep doing this. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not it's not a mystery or like <laughs> it's, like it's not mm-hmm. rocket science. It is a science. It's anatomy, but it's not rocket science. People. And the funny thing about it is, like, if you look at your fingers and then you like look at your index finger or your points of finger, right? Mm-hmm. That little first, that first notch. Like for your uh, nail to that first like part where your finger creases, mm-hmm. that's an inch. Mm-hmm. Like, not like, a lot of people know that. You do not have to go that far. Mm-hmm. Like uh, some people don't even know that the the clitoris is like huge as hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> like that little button that y'all see there. That's not it. That's not everything. It's like. It's claws up in that motherfucker that you yep. get to explore and have fun with. Like <laughs> the walls, massage that too, because that's the, yep. um, that's the, the clitoris is too. all around that, all around that. Yep, it's a muscle. Mm. Yeah, it's analogous to the penis. If y'all, if y'all want to know, like, since we are talking about masturbation, uh, uh, many people don't realize how the the glands or the dickhead. Mm-hmm. That is where that's where the uh, majority of the uh, nerves are uh, yep. for like pleasure and whatnot. So when someone's sucking your dick, you're not necessarily getting a lot of pleasure from them going to the base you're getting pleasure from them rubbing the glandular the glands that's about mm-hmm. it so mm-hmm. like when they're like when you're fucking somebody's throat or whatever you're getting that yep. pleasure because the glands is getting the pleasure the head is getting the pleasure not yep. because the shaft is getting the pleasure yep. and uh i had <laughs> i kind of had to teach that to my uh my regular because that's a he's a mofo that likes to try to throat fucking i'm like i'm not a throat fucking motherfucker i i barely <laughs> like to be down here to suck a dick so we're not going to be we're we're not doing that so like even um massaging the head and just like oh shit and you see that buckle because you know that's where the pleasure is at mm-hmm. like you don't really have to go deep all the way to the base of anybody's dick um, to do anything. Now, that little gooch area, that's a little bit different. That's the There's some other... The gouch. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what we call it now. Oh. The gouch. <laughs> <laughs> that area, that that's a little bit of a different sensory kind of thing, but mm-hmm. you, you can play with that too and play with glands. Look, however you find your pleasure is how you find your pleasure. Just oh, know. Yeah. That head is where you need to be. Now, I will say, when it comes to myself and Pamela, I don't <laughs> like Pamela, honestly. Palmisha. Um, me and my hand, Miss Handler. Um, whenever we engage Handler in Handler Adams. Handler Adams. I like that. Uh, whenever we're at play, uh, yes, I do enjoy you know the shaft play a little bit, even though I know it's not necessarily providing like uh, a build up a pleasure but it's it's kind of it, it, mentally I do like that right. because it's like okay let's jerk some more blood up uh, <laughs> in a sense but mm-hmm. it's not necessarily I know it's not really providing me pleasure but if I bring myself out of it and start rubbing the tip in mm-hmm. a circular motion oh my god mm, I just be sending myself places y'all <laughs> know your body people <laughs> you're right you gotta know you gotta know your body um and that's the biggest thing right um getting the chance to explore your own body in a safe space mm. i don't think people understand like when you when you have like oppressive households or like religious standards and all that kind of stuff it prevents you from like actually getting to know yourself 
Mm. So when somebody comes out here and it actually shows you yourself, you be like, oh, I didn't know I was like this. Let me believe everything this person says or does or whatever. Like, no, like if you know yourself then you can prevent a lot of issues from popping up in the future. Mm. Um, that's a word. Yeah. And that's why. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. What are you saying? Oh, and that's why, like, you know, sexual like expression, sexual identity, um, personal stances, all that kind of stuff is important to figure out and kind of play around with as you, you know, grow and operate in this life. <clears throat> so that is that's actually leading to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is uh, repressed sexual expression. But before mm-hmm. I get your sentiment on repressed sexual expression, I want to know what it, what do you do for yourself in terms of mas- uh, masturbation to make sure that you feel pleased? Like, how do you treat yourself in those moments? Like, is there anything special that you do? Anything that you want, like, at every time you masturbate that you want to happen? Like, what does that look like for you? Well, most of the time, okay, so, like, it has to be quiet, first off. <laughs> like, I don't, like, a lot of noise and stuff, like, people moving around and shit, because, you know, I don't live by myself, so I'm just, like, a lot of movement kind of throws me off. Then, like, me personally, I like my legs open. Like, I can have on a shirt or whatever, but the bottom's coming off. <laughs> um, And I got to have them legs open, because, like, it's just one of the things. It's freedom. Um, yeah, it's freedom. Like, it get hot down there. Um, and then, like, another thing, like, when I'm cl- like when I'm close, I noticed this about myself. Because, like, I was like, every time I get close, I start rubbing my balls for some reason. I'm like, why am I rubbing my balls? <laughs> I don't know. Like, hmm. it's, it's, it's like that kind of stuff is, like, the stuff that you don't really notice until you, like, somebody points it out or, like, you know, you have a partner that's masturbating, you, and then you just like, there's something missing from this. <laughs> from my boss, from my boss. Yeah, like you got to teach. You have to teach somebody how to masturbate. You. Mm-hmm. Like I know I've I've um, been with others who like they like pressure on their dick. Like they want it to be grabbed. Like <clears throat> being in a space of a uh, man who have sex with other men let's put it that way and um someone decides to jerk you off Mm -hmm. you're just that teaches me what they like for themselves Mm because i don't like other people to touch my dick because i'm like you don't know how to handle this bitch like i know how to handle this bitch don't touch (laughs) my girl like that don't do that to her don't don't fuck with it so (laughs) i'm like (laughs) i do not like people to touch my dick but because like i don't i am very uh, sensual when it comes to how i play with myself but like Mm -hmm. to be in a space and um they do grab on i'm just like okay that means you're the type of person who likes the pressure of it um when Mm -hmm. you're having sex like going back to my regular uh, he's the type who enjoys pressure um, not too much pressure but pressure in general but also enjoys pressure when it uh, like closer to the balls area and yeah. like so just from watching because um, the motherfucker doesn't like to communicate and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm great when it comes to body language and all this other stuff so I'm like okay I know in order to get this person to the point of wanting to ejaculate i'm going to have to cuff apply pressure and then still you know uh, apply the sensation towards um, the glands to produce Mm -hmm. the outcome that i want for example the last time we hooked up the don't make me come don't make me come i'm not i can't i know don't do it don't do it don't do it that happens because i know how to manipulate his body because i pay attention so it's like um when it comes to those spaces and you don't have the the knowledge or the know-how and you're uh, with other uh, men it's just like you they teach you what they like versus uh giving the space for you to teach them what you like for your body Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. communicate people and that's the thing though like for me for me it's extremely hard for me to communicate only because like i'm I was never in a space where I could communicate that stuff. And also, 
anxiety is a bitch. Like anxiety is a whole bitch. Like that's that's one bitch I don't I don't like fucking. <laughs> like she she just kicks in my door like, hey nigga, what you doing? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like I get scared. Um, but you know, be having anxiety and shit. Like you just don't know. Like you're afraid of talking to that person and letting them know and being vulnerable with them. Mm. Um, because you don't know the outcome, like you don't know if they might, oh, nigga, you, like you gross, like because not everybody is open to ha- sex talk, like that's just thing. That is true, I and mean, that's that's another thing. Most definitely, if you try to tell somebody, like I, I, I look, I might end up saying this again on the podcast because I get pissed every, every time this happens. I express, pe- I tell people exactly what I'm looking for when it comes to a sexual encounter. I tell them. I enjoy when somebody like plays with my ears, like suck on my fucking ears. I'm a different kind of beast. <laughs> and these motherfuckers still don't do it. Like, What do you mean? Let somebody exactly, tell you what to do. Exactly. You have an entire playbook and you still don't. Like, if you want me to be the nastiest hoe from, like, I walk into from the, the uh, house, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, literally. I walk into the house. Everything's great. I sit down on a couch and we having a conversation. You just come over, nibble on my fucking ear. We fucking automatically. Right. <laughs> like, nothing else could have happened in that conversation. Mm-hmm. Even if I was not really ready and prepared mentally, as soon as that, that tongue touched my fucking ear, oh my God, what you trying to do? <laughs> what you trying to do like bitch at first you wasn't cute but you real cute right now like what you trying to do what's up what, like, how you feeling are we are we are we trying to fuck or because you did the thing that needed to be done like you you touch the button and the button says on and the on switch is not turning off until this nut is busted like what what we doing we here now <laughs> yeah these motherfuckers still don't do it mm-hmm. and, like mm-hmm. And the thing is, like, some sometimes I just be wanting to be like, okay, are you like nibble my ear? I, I want to send that correction, but like you said, some people don't take, like, you don't know how they're going to react to it because it's like some people when you um, give them that little instruction, that small piece of correction is like, oh, um, now I'm turned off. Or they took offense, thinking that they didn't, they weren't doing something right. It's like, no, it's not mm-hmm. that you weren't doing something right. It's just that I want this exact thing to happen. That's all. That's all. Don't be in your head. Let's just, you know, do this together. But nibble on the ears, motherfuckers. That's all I'm going to say. Nibble on the fucking. I'm not going to jump off of this uh, this fucking pedestal. It's always going to be here. The motherfuckers do it on a regular basis. Y'all going to hear me talking about these damn ear nibbles all of next fucking season <laughs> <laughs> on the fucking podcast. <laughs> y'all, I'm going to fill y'all in. Nope, motherfuckers are not nibbling on the ears yet, y'all. Still not. You know what? And that's another thing. Somebody, somebody said, uh, what is it? Something on somebody's toes. Like, I get it. If, like in, in thought, in mm-hmm. theory, I'm like, okay, that that's what it is, sucking on toes. But like when you actually like get there and stuff, you just kind of don't think about it. It's like it escapes your mind because you like because you don't think about like every part of your body being like an androgynous zone. Mm. Like for me, like for me, if like you suck on my thumb, I'm like, okay, mm. what's happening here? Like what's what's going on? Like let's let's have a conversation. You trying to fuck, right? <laughs> like, Look, no, I, I I actually had my um big toe sucked on, and oh my god, it, I was just like I didn't think I did not go over there expecting this was going to happen. Because if so, I would have like put extra lotion on my uh, fucking feet and like <laughs> did some extra washing after, like before I went over there. Like mm-hmm. like when I shower, I shower. Yes, I get my feet, but it, it, I've been walking after I got the shower. So if I would have known a motherfucker was going to be sucking on my toes, I would have went to the uh, bathroom, washed my feet again, and then put on some socks immediately after, and then show mm-hmm. up. Because I don't want you to be sucking on the um, dirt of my um, bathroom or kitchen floor, whatever. Uh, I want you to have a healthy experience or a non, mm-hmm. I don't think there's bacteria on my fucking toe experience. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's like, let me know. But I was just like, oh shit. Mm. And it was like, 
sucking to my toes while jerking me off and I'm just like you are doing some things that I was not expecting when I came over here I'm living for what's happening right now continue doing this don't take this toe out your fucking mouth motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> Now I'll just invite another third a third person over here so they can fucking suck on this damn ear. I'm sorry. I'm good. <laughs> so to go back to uh repressed sexual expression. Uh as you mentioned, some of this does come from like uh religious backgrounds, even some type of parenting or just the society that we live in, because look, we're very sexually oppressed and repressed. It's oh, yeah. ridiculous. So what is your perspective of, of repressed sexual expression? So like my perspective of it, and I'm guessing like when you say perspective, you mean like my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't agree with it. Like, because first off, when pe- two people are, you don't, okay. Sex itself is not a grounds for a relationship. Like you can't just like, have sex but like, yeah we guess we're good we're, we're together now no that's the main reason why sexual repression is not is not a good thing in my point of view um because if you don't know how to conduct yourself when you first have your sexual experience because it can be very overwhelming um then you're not gonna know how to handle yourself with subsequent ones mm. um like i'm of the firm belief that like if you've never done it once then you're not going to know how to handle yourself or how to do better and all that kind of stuff like it's like riding a bike um you know exercising anything that's physical really like you if you do it once and you have somebody to coach you the right way you're going to start doing it right every single time Mm -hmm. and you're going to know how to how your body responds every single time um but without that you're just gonna be a loss in the sauce like this is why people have this my theory is this is why people have failed marriages this is why people have failed relationships this is why people fail to um have or establish meaningful connections uh with partners Mm. you know i i second that like for me i i think of like sexual expression as another language too like Mm -hmm. um whenever because i hate when people say that they expect their partner to know the road map to their body and i'm just like you cannot decipher a map if you don't know the the legend you don't know Mm -hmm. the lingo that's on the map you don't even know the language of that map so Mm -hmm. to tell me that i need to come into the space and knowing everything i need to do to please you is making me have to work harder to try to decipher you without even Mm -hmm. knowing the language and Mm -hmm. what good is that that's like me bringing hieroglyphs and tell and you tell me uh ask me what's the fucking story here i don't fucking know i have to (laughs) i have to track down what five different fucking languages just so i can get (laughs) close to something that i can translate these hieroglyphs for just to give you the answer Mm -hmm. i'm not doing all of that just give me the shortcut and let me know what the fuck you like and that's perfectly fine that Mm -hmm. does like telling me the lingo like going off with the ear thing even though you know that Mm -hmm. you're not um doing that that does not that does not necessarily mean that you uh have everything that you need that's just one of the things that gets me there right Right. or um with your partner just because you know oh this my partner loves when i um lick the clit or i um suck the dick or whatever that's not the only things that gets them off um what are the your erogenous zones what are are the Mm -hmm. other areas Mm -hmm. that really please you that i can tap into to make sure that this is a a full-on experience and if most definitely if you're only um expression of your sexuality is through penetrative means everybody has a different penis like you're not going right. to be mm-hmm. fucked by the same penis on a regular basis and now if you you know outside of a marriage or whatever but are uh, uh, right <laughs> or like a, a a monogamous relationship you still want to want something different what if you uh your partner wants to try anal and you're not comfortable with that that's a conversation mm-hmm. then 
Okay, yep. let's let's discuss that uh, comfort. Is it because you tried it in the past and someone violated you? Is it something that is mm. because you just don't trust the action? Is it because you lack the knowledge there? What is mm-hmm. it that will make you comfortable to get to this level that we can try this? Like, mm-hmm. really do have to map out your sexual desires with the partner, regardless of who they are. You can always start with the basics and then expand as things go on. Like, even when I mm-hmm. meet up with people, because I always ask them, what are you into? And if they just like, oh, I'm a top or I'm a bottom or I'm a verse or uh, I just like fucking, I like oral. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's... I'm just trying to get my dick wet. I don't <laughs> right. That's the bare minimum of, you know, sexual expression in queer spaces, I guess. Cool. But what else do you like? Do you like aftercare? And I, I don't like, like, even with those people who don't know the lingo and whatnot, I save those conversations for when we're actually in person. Like, okay, because um, I provide aftercare regardless. And after we have mm-hmm. sex, I ask people, "How are you doing? You okay?" And all this mm-hmm. other stuff. Check in, and if they just want to go ahead and dip on out, I let them dip on out. You don't need that aftercare. Cool, whatever. Because um, nigga, mm-hmm. I'm fine. But like, <laughs> but like, you need to know these things about your partner. Uh, regardless and because we live in a, uh, mm-hmm. a a space where we are not open um, to having those conversations with people or we mm-hmm. uh, have the image that mm-hmm. all sex is pretty much scripted for you and how you yep. do it like you go in you fuck somebody busting nut hopefully both probably not and then you continue on your day and the other person just masturbate themselves until they bust their nut and all is well after that if that's the script that you're accustomed to that's fine that's great that's dandy that does not necessarily mean that it's healthy that doesn't necessarily mean that it's great it just means y'all might need to have a conversation of how you can both get there at the same time or within a similar time frame mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. i say all that to say mm-hmm do not expect people to have the answers to any test that's in a foreign language that they're not accustomed to. Mm-hmm. And I'd say this as well. Like you have to remember sex is one of those things that all, for, for men, I'm going to say this for men or uh, presenting masculine people. Mm-hmm. Sex is one of those things that does not come around enough for dudes to be extremely comfortable with it a hundred percent of the time mm. like women like a woman could go down the street right now and be like hey you want to fuck and they be like sure whatever and it happens women can get more use of sex than dudes can like and that's part of the reason why like how i said you know as you continue to do it you get better and like you start to get more comfortable with it and know what how your body responds and shit like dudes don't get that mm. so when women ask like oh what will get you there or like how will this help you and stuff like that it to me i'm like i don't really know because i don't do this a lot like <laughs> mm. like if i was fucking on the regular so I'm like yeah just you know spin around three times smack my ass and i'm good <laughs> like no i don't i don't get to do that a lot so you know asking being okay with your partner even not knowing is a thing as well mm. like maybe they were sexually repressed um maybe they just don't do it enough whatever the case may be just be open to be in that safe space yeah and uh this is gonna be a controversial statement and i don't mean it to be that way uh of mm-hmm. course this is just my personal view on it um and when it comes to the ability to be uh, able to express yourself sexually uh again this is a personal feeling um now from what i see women are oppressed sexually uh meaning that they cannot express themselves sexually mm-hmm. uh however they're not repressed sexually meaning women often get the uh, ability to vocalize a lot more of the freaky things that they want to get into because a woman being freaky is also uh, synonymous to being sexy and kinky and great and i want to explore that and Mm -hmm. i will 
give you that liberty to explore that. Of course, you have to have the right partner to do so, but you get that encouragement to be as freaky as you want to be. Opposed to with uh, a lot of men, of course, we are uh, we have the freedom to have sex with everybody we want to have sex with. But we do have that repression in terms of we're not able to explore our sexualities as uh, as much because one will be labeled as something that we're not either less than a man queer Mm -hmm. or whatever Mm -hmm. it is because Mm -hmm. even in spaces today like there was an argument like 10 years or seven years ago about eating pussy uh, having that seen as being less than manly eating ass is being seen as being gay and it's like even begging pegging is being gay and it's like those what? things and this is something that uh, from what i've seen and i have to vocalize this because i am a bisexual man man people uh for those who are new to the show look i look at things in an objective space and i look at both sides on things but i see that um those kind of negative stances from everybody and not just men like women as well now, I, I will say it's been changing a little bit more, but not changing in a um, in a way that is beneficial to a lot more guys, because mm-hmm. now you have a whole conglomerate of men who really do want to uh, express themselves a lot more, who are just super afraid to do so because they feel as though they're going to lose their stance as a man. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a cultural thing that we really do have to deal with. But right. look, I, I, I personally don't have the time to deal with all of that. They better find the podcast and find some healing. That's all I can say on that. But (laughs) it's okay for you to express yourself how you want to express yourself. But you have that huge conglomerate of uh, most definitely heterosexual men. And um, from the queer space, even queer men fall into that category too, Mm -hmm. who do not want to express themselves a lot openly because they either fear that it makes them uh, feminine, it makes them less of a man, their manhood is uh, connected to that, even as a gay person by man queer man or whatever the case is um that they are they have to uh, present themselves as the manly manly person they have to be masculine at all times mm-hmm. Even they repress themselves sexually too because they don't, are afraid of mentioning like okay you know every now and again i'm okay with getting my ass ate or something like that <laughs> <laughs> but like um uh, essentially uh what i'm saying is that men do have a high level of oppression within this society to uh, how we get to express ourselves sexually because if we're not taking on the role as um you know the stereotypical or the heteronormative manly man we're automatically seen as being less than a man or we're uh less than uh a masculine entity or we are automatically feminine which honestly there's nothing wrong with being feminine at all most definitely for those who are women but the same message is perpetuated with those who are women or identify as women too and and i have to say that part too because i even saw um like on some apps where you might have a trans woman who says that, oh, I don't want any uh, weak men. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've seen that, and I'm not saying that to shade a, a trans woman or anything like that, because um, you do you, boo, I love you. Um, but it's like, there's nothing less than that person wanting a, 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 a partner who helps them or allows them to express themselves freely in terms of their sexuality. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's not too many men given that authority or that permission to go beyond the heteronormative image of masculinity or sexual expression, uh, which causes a lot of issues. That's my little message there. Um, (laughs) But like, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I think that we really do have to just start giving people the freedom to express themselves openly without Mm -hmm. judgment because again this is not like a male versus female situation because everybody deserves the opportunity to express their sexual sexuality however they want to without judgment Uh, it's just recognizing that these things do exist throughout our culture And because it exists throughout a culture, which is a systemic thing, we have Mm -hmm. to be cognizant of that, hey, 
this person might be coming from a space that they did not have that permission. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Oh, I was gonna say, oh, and also like women who uh, are extremely sexually repressed end up uh, sexually showing out. And that's not, I mean, it's not healthy, but at the same time, it's kind of healthy. Like, how is she going to learn? Hmm. Yeah. So, last thing that I want to talk about before we end this episode is, are there any failures in male sex toys that you've seen or want to talk about? Listen, I don't know who needs to hear this. Uh, Flesh White, if you listen, Bad Dragon, all y'all motherfuckers, y'all need to know that dudes, I don't like masturbatory toys are not good. They just not like. There's all the only thing there is is just a cosmetic thing. Um, women have all these little gadgets. They got clit stimulators and shit like that, and all this other kind of stuff. And it only costs them like maybe a hundred dollars at most. In order for, do you know how much a real doll costs? A real uh, doll. Um, you talking about the the blow up one? No, no, or no. It's the the the, the 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 figure, the half body. Yeah, the actual half. Those things like five hundred. A good one. Like three hundred, nah, five hundred dollars. No, nah, those are like five thousand. Oh. Yeah, I'm talking about like the actual real doll and shit like that. Those are like at least a good three thousand to uh and if you really want to get fancy with it, uh four thousand dollars. Like those kind of things are what dudes actually need for one. Because if you're like if you're like me, you can get into a headspace where like, you know, you only thing you doing is just like, yeah, this is a this is a vagina, like this that's it. Mm-hmm. Mm. you don't get the whole like okay this is like a full bodied person and like you know you can do all this other kind of stuff and shit um so yeah like make real dolls affordable like nobody dude i like ass (laughs) i I like more than the whole same like i will say the uh, failure i see in a lot of sex toys is that one they don't really cater to men per se and i get that because look the market for sex toys has always been women Mm -hmm. but um this is also going off of the repression of uh, like of sexual expression is like giving that leeway for a lot more men to express themselves sexually too like i love that they do have a lot more like sounding tools for people who are into sounding Mm -hmm. but um a, a, a guy doesn't necessarily have to go into the woman's section just to find the sex toy that he needs. <laughs> like, right. that's, that's the thing that really bothers me sometimes. Like, uh, why not have like a, a cock ring that is also a masturbatory toy? Like, right. that will be lit as fuck. I put this at the base of my cock. <laughs> Ew, that sounded so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that again i put this <laughs> i tried to do it y'all i'm sorry i tried i tried i put this at the base of my dick and uh let it you know <laughs> start to massage upward and downwards that way and it masturbates me that way and then i can either join it by um focusing on the glands a little bit more but that's for mm-hmm. those people who appreciate the sensation of the jerking motion that's right. a, a way to you know get that vibration going on or have something that i can utilize with my um uh, my testicles uh, for those people who like the pressure play uh, that doesn't have to be like a cock ring like all of the toys for men are centered towards the dick and yep. you do have the occasional anal stimulators which are focused on uh, you know bottoms and uh, men who uh, have sex with men are just you know pegging but you don't have that the option of you know seeing more things uh outside like if they have the bdm uh bdsm space on a lot of sex shops where you mm-hmm. can uh well novelty shops where you can find like different toys that you can go uh, like go through but mm-hmm. even opening some of those up to uh show that hey you have this option for your nipples that you can use a vibrating nipple ring for those people who like nipple stimulation um that you don't have to go to the bsm for because look most people won't even think that you'll find nipple play in BDSM. In why, the would they, 
<laughs> what? <laughs> nipple, nipple clamps. That's the only reason why it's in the BDSM oh. uh, the section. But you you won't be able to find anything like that. Like having things available that you um, that is either unisex, of course, mm-hmm. but um, that's also sex specific, um, genitalia specific, whatever. Mm-hmm. But they do not do enough research into men's pleasure for my liking and i actually um decided to like take part in a survey um hmm. company to like provide you know my feedback on some things in hopes that they um put me on to start testing toys so i can give additional feedback on what um you know is pleasing for men, mm-hmm, and how they can expand their products for a lot more men yeah. um uh, but it's like there's not enough um like if you go into the uh women's section you have thousands of toys you go to the men's section it's like we got about 25 and most exactly. of these things are the exact same thing just a different yep. color or a different shape or a different mm-hmm. function in terms of like pulsation like why is it that we cannot have our own underwear that we can use that also you know provides vibration similar to the uh one that you can find for women like not to say like it's a a huge thing but i would like to have that i would like to have uh underwear that's like also a butt plug i guess that i can utilize in public with a partner I wouldn't mind that or a cock ring that is attached to like underwear whatever like we can expect excuse me we can expand the options to a lot more um, people or even with the um, cock rings why don't we have a lot more glands rings or a a glands Mm -hmm. uh, cap interesting okay if we know that is a place where uh, a lot of uh, men and, are. yeah, we know yeah. that's the the center space. Why are we not providing anything to actually stimulate that? These are the kind of things that we can really use in those spaces, and because they are not really available to us, then it's like even more reasons to um, not exploring these toys. Like, why am I going to uh, purchase a toy if it's not going to do anything for me? Like, I literally have to purchase for myself purchase um clitoral <laughs> uh items just so i can find a little bit more things that stimulate my nipples uh, yeah so yeah just thinking outside the box exactly Whew, okay y'all i hope y'all enjoyed this damn episode hakeem thank you so much for being on do you have any last words uh love yourself love others and um keep it moving man Amen. Well, look, y'all, November is coming to a close. Life is good. The new year is on its way. Hopefully, everything is a lot better for us all. And hopefully, a lot of us a lot happier. Who knows what the new year is going to bring. When it does come to New Year's resolutions, my thing is start practicing those new things that you want in the new year as soon as you can before the new year begins. Start on January, not January, start on December 1st. That way it becomes a habit before the year begins. So go ahead and go out there and get your habit going. If you haven't caught up to the uh, show, go back and listen. Uh, Again, we have one more episode. Well, not again, but (laughs) we have one more episode in the November series. Before we go on, the Holiloquy podcast goes on break for about three months. We will be back in uh, March, y'all. We will be back. But thank you all so much for listening to the Holiloquy podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality. Just in case no one else told you this today, you are beautiful. You are worthy of happiness and joy. You are enough and then some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.